Good morning, everyone. Uh, as If you were here with us last week, you remember I actually preached our Father's Day sermon last week. Uh, but I'm going to bring this one back into our Father's Day uh, um, mode of operation. It's just one of those things. I, I think that, uh, see, my, my kids actually decided that they were going to celebrate Father's Day last week. And I think that's what threw me off. Uh, and, and so I had prepared something just for Father's Day last week, only to realize once I got here that Father's Day was this week. And so now what we're going to actually look at is fathers raise your children. And we're going to, I didn't even put your, your text down on your paper. So if you have an insert, you might want to write down Ephesians 6, um, 1 through 4. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning for our sermon. Just was thinking, uh, and I told Michelle this morning, this is one of those, those messages where I'm really having a hard time grasping a hold of the whole thing, even though I, I put it together. It's one of those that I'm having a hard time, you know, making all the dots connect in, 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 in some way. And I think it's because raising children is never an easy prospect. It's one of those things that uh, you, you start off probably when you're too young to be raising kids. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, and then by the time you're done raising kids, you're too old to really enjoy it. Uh, because you're, you're, you're still helping your kids raise their kids, right? And so being, being a parent during both those immature days and then the over-mature days, somewhere in the midst of that, we, we come to a place where we realize that parenting uh, children is, is not easy. It's a challenge. Uh, and, and because it's such a challenge... When we look into God's Word, it seems so simple, right? Uh, the way that the Apostle Paul puts it, it's it, it picturesque, and, and it should be no problem. We should be able to, to do this thing without, without batting an eye. And the truth is, all the, the smaller things are the harder things. You know, when, so we're going to talk about some of those things this morning. It's, it's, it's almost more in a form of a lesson than it is a sermon, but it's, it really is a message, I think, that is needful for fathers today. Uh, it's an encouragement that, that what we would understand is what God has placed in His Word, God is also going to stand behind. And so He'll never leave us during the midst of all of it. He'll always be with us in the presence of the challenges in which we actually face. So if it has to be today that we are challenged by raising children, then God says that He will be with us in the midst of all of that that He will not leave us alone and high and dry. He will give us the instructions on how we are supposed to be able to accomplish the, the task that is at hand, but it is ours then to put that into motion. And as we put it into motion, then God comes alongside of us and He helps the very, the, the very actions of which we are taking to do the things in which He has called us to do. I was thinking also of how important uh, the family unit is. We we realize that how important the church is. I think Brother Scott did a very good job of, of of dealing with that subject matter this morning. How that Jesus is the head of the church. <clears throat> when just the same way, because the institution of the family was actually before the church ever was. In the same way, God has placed the family unit together, saying that the husband is the head of the wife. The wife and the husband are partners together to raise the children, uh, and, and they are to do so with, with God's help. And so we, we kind of see the same thing. And I was also thinking that how Jesus himself, when it came down to the, the disciples telling, uh, telling him that these children were, were flocking around him and, he, and they needed to get out, they needed to get away. And Jesus took one of the children, put him on his lap, and said unto his disciples, Forbid not the children to come unto me. And if we could put that into perspective in and of itself, that, that, that the child was important to Jesus, then maybe we would understand how important it is for us to raise our children the way that God has planned for us to. Because this generation, it may be lost, but it doesn't mean that it has to be lost for good. So if we raise our children to, to honor and glorify God, then what we see is hope for the next generation, right? And as the, as the family unit then is, in, as, is important, it is important to the church that the family unit be developed. 
Because if that, if it, within the church we find the children being raised in a manner which God has has intended for them to be raised, then what we will see is the next generation of church being elevated. And so, fathers, raise your children. Before we actually get into the reading of our text, which is in Ephesians 6, let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we bow in your presence this morning with gratitude in our hearts for all that you have done for each and every one of us. We thank you for our families and we pray the blessings upon them. Father, as, as we honor our, our fathers today, we first honor you, but then we uh, turn and honor our, our fleshly fathers, thanking them for, for taking the time out to be the fathers in which you have intended them to be. Father, strengthen us that we might, we might know your will and that we might perform those things in which you would have for us to do. Father, we know that the challenges of life sometimes be overwhelm each and every one of us, but we know that you are with us. We know you will guide us and you, and you will help us to accomplish those things that you have set forth for us to do. Father, we pray this morning as your message goes out that as the hearers hear it, that it might be applied to their hearts and then uh, acted upon with inside of their lives. And Father, if there be one that under the preaching of your word hears your message and understands their lost condition before you, I pray, Heavenly Father, that they might come to know Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior today, while we call it still today. I thank you and I love you for all that you have done for me. Watch over me and guide me now as I present your word in which be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> Ephesians 6, beginning in verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest be, live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. As I said in the beginning, children are a challenge, but they are a heritage of the Lord. And in saying that, what we have to understand is they, in, in some ways, and, and let me back up just for a second, because I want to, to say something that kind of came clear to me this morning when I was going over this again. And that is, if a person doesn't have a child, that does not necessarily mean that, that person was... Uh, that, that the Lord said no for you, right? The Lord's not up there saying yes, 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 no, no, no. He's not, he's not uh, dictating who shall have children, who shall not have children. I think what he basically is saying is this, if, you, if you'll stick with me on it, and that is he is saying that the fact that we have children, that is a heritage that the Lord has given unto us as human beings that they shouldn't be considered to be something that is of no worth, but rather to be seen as a reward, a, a grace, a, a gift in which God has given unto us. I know uh, for, for some time we, we had hardly any children with inside of the building, and I thought to myself how empty and how flat that was that we didn't have children running around here and there, even if it meant that our parents were having to stand, uh, stand firm and tell their children, stop running, stop running, chasing them around the, the auditorium, trying to get them to calm down and, and sit still. You know, for them, it was a lot of work. That's why I say it's a challenge. But for, for us as human beings, children are certainly a blessing in which God has given unto us as far as in our family unit. Their joy brings joy with inside of our lives. Their laughter brings laughter. I, 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 Bash had left me uh, a picture last Sunday morning after he left on the pulpit, uh, a picture that, that he wanted me to have that he himself uh, had colored in. And, and, and the little things like that the children bring, which, which enhance our lives. And so when I say to you that children are a heritage of the Lord, what I want to say to you is that as, as a society, children are a blessing. And we should see them as such, as, as God has given them unto us. Matter of fact, Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. What a blessing that God has given unto us. You know, 
I suppose many of us could go back in our minds and we can remember the days when we were young. I mean, it's getting harder and harder. But still, <clears throat> I think we could possibly go back in our minds and, and remember the times where it seemed like days were forever, right? And uh, mischief was easy to get into. But, but the laughter and the joy in which we were able to experience and the things which we were able to do was such a, a, a blessing, which was ours. Uh, I can just remember all the times me and my brother were out in this, the street and we'd be playing uh, baseball out in the middle of the, of the road and only having to dodge cars as cars came by. Uh, but we'd always hit our ball into the neighbor's yard and the neighbor, uh, he, he'd be all mad and angry that our balls were ending up in his backyard. But that, th those were the days. Those were, those were what we, the things in which we did, you know, uh, Children are God's gift to each and every one of us because we do not stay young forever. And so sometimes what we wind up doing in the days in which we live is that we live some of our life through the children that God has given unto us. You know, and, and as, as a, an older person who has grandkids, it, it, it does become a challenge in that it's it's not always easy to keep up with the kids. But there's such a blessing that God has given unto each and every one of us. And and what our job then is, is to help motivate them and move them down the right path of life. Because there there are, according to the scripture, two different paths. There is one which many go in thereat, and it is and it is a road into destruction. But there is one where where few find it. But if they find it, it leads them to life. And I mean eternal life. And so it's our job as individuals, as, as parents, and even people to raise our children to, to go down that right path, to, to, be, to be understanding that, that life is it's much more than what we have around us here today. It is what God has provided for us in the future. And we'll get a little bit more to that here in a second, but to understand what our purpose is and our and our job is before our with our children, the, the gift that God has given unto us is that that we are supposed to help them to know what is the right way of life rather than to just let them be hoping that they'll find it. Because the truth is, if all we do is sit back and wait to see if they find it, they'll never find it. It is our job to help to direct them. Sometimes children are like arrows, arrows in our hands, and we, we shoot them in the direction to hope that they hit the mark, right? Sometimes those arrows fly away, and, and then it's hard to bring them back to the place and where, where they are supposed to be. And sometimes though, those arrows are arrows through our hearts and that they break our hearts for, for, for different reasons because maybe they have chosen a different pathway, a different road which, which is not going to be profitable for their lives. But while we are here, our job still is to try to pave the right way for our children to be able to find God and to glorify Him in their lives. There are, though, as we talked about last week, there are paths in which sometimes our children walk down which are different than pathways in which we have we try to, to help them find. And so they, they go down a different path with they, with, of their own choosing, like the prodigal son, who, who went a different direction, obviously, than what he was raised to go down. But the father being patient, waiting, was able to see his son return back to the place in which he belonged. That's not always the case. But in the case of the prodigal son, that was. But there is another example that I would like to give unto you this morning. That is of Luke, found in Luke, the second chapter, in verse 46. And that is the case of Jesus. Because it says in verse 46, it says, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Now, just to go back for a second, 
uh, the, the family had gone up to Jerusalem as they do every year for the festivals that were going on there. And so as they were returning back home, everybody's happy-go-lucky on the, on the travels back home. And we're talking about they would, they would not go as just a singular family, but they would go almost as a clan up to Jerusalem for these festivities. And so as they are returning back, all of a sudden they begin to look for Jesus and they couldn't find Jesus. Jesus was missing. And so they, they being Mary and, uh, and Joseph, returned back to Jerusalem in order to find him. They, they looked for him. And so it says uh, in verse 47, as we go on, it says, And all the, that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And it almost begs the question, did she forget who Jesus was, right? Did, did she forget who she was in the plan of God, that she brought forth God's only son into this world? And, and so as we look at it, I think what, what, it, what I look at in, in view of what we're looking at this morning, is sometimes even our children take a higher course than what we have planned and what we have tried to move them towards, and what we have tried to help develop them to be. And, and, and we should be happy and thrilled when our children choose higher courses. And, and it reminds me of the story of Timothy, how that Paul and Silas, as they began to do, go on the second missionary journey, we find that they went through different areas. At first, they went to the churches in which they had that Paul had gone to prior, and and they tried to establish them more in the work of the Lord, and they then moved on, and they ended up in a place called Derby or or Iconium, and in this place they heard of a young boy, a young man who who loved the Lord, who 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 was serving the Lord, whose 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 father was Greek, but his mother and grandmother were Jewish. And the mother and the grandmother, they taught him from the scriptures the, the things about the Lord. And so when Paul came along and saw this man, uh, this young man, he took him with him to, for a higher course, a, a higher way, a different life than, than what he was living at this point in time. He would become like, like Paul's son in the faith. And at this point, what we can say is that that God was working in the life of Timothy to develop in him what he would have him to be. And isn't that really what, when it boils down to it, we want for our kids? That our kids would be in a position, that their hearts would, would be tender to be able to receive the things that are from God so that, those, so that they might receive from him the higher course in which he has for them to live a more blessed life, a life that, that is in God's control. The great duty of children is to obey their parents. Obey their parents. In the days in which we live, we find basically that is a harder thing to come by than, than anything. You know, that, that, that children, because that's not the way, and, and understand what I, I'm, 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 talking to you in, in some sense of what is natural versus what life has become. I believe what is natural is it, it is natural for a child to, to be obedient to their, child, to their parents. I think that's natural. I think when we talk to our kids at the very early outset, they, they are willing, they are desirous. This is what they want to do. I think so much garbage has been has been shoved down their 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 throats and and messed with their heads. So that today that children are are disobedient more than obedient. That that if you'll look at their lives which and and the things in which they they gravitate towards their friends at school and all the things in which basically it, it influence their lives, they they no longer are motivated to to be obedient unto their their parents. Obedience calls for submission. And so to be, to be able to submit yourself under a higher authority, saying that this authority is what's going to help me govern my life. And that's what the children are being asked to do. 
to honor, to fear, to reverence. And I, I believe most of this is, 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 is really in its natural state, is exactly what God created them to be. But to understand that when sin began to influence the lives of individuals, even children, they, they move away from the, the, the natural and go into what is not natural. And, it, and we might say it's natural because it's a thing of the flesh. But I say to you this, that's not the way God created it. And so because it's not the way God created it, it becomes unnatural and, and getting them back to that place becomes a more difficult thing. Listen, this is the, what God says in our in reference to us before him. He says in Psalm 111, verse, six, uh, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I would say that if we could transfer that thought just into our family unit and to be able to say the fear of of our our of our parents is the beginning of wisdom for our children that that if they would get a healthy respect for our for for their parents then what you would see is they would have a more well balanced life as the parent would be able to parent their children the way that they're supposed to Matthew Henry wrote, he said, The arguments engaging thereunto are taken from the light of nature and reason. It is a, a natural truth that, that children are to be in submission and obedience and reverence their, 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 their parents. Go, go on to say that the command, this is what I would look at in, in view of that. He said, from the command of God and the promise added to, the, to that light, which is that truth and reason. When, when, when we come to a place of, of understanding truth, and that truth is matched up with the promise that God has made, then, then what we find is the life that he has actually intended for us to, to be able to experience. In Exodus, the 20th chapter, this is that promise. This is that command. But I believe it's the fifth commandment that you find in the Ten Commandments. And this, and when I got to think about that, I got to think about that in, in view of this, that this is exactly what they took down out of, out of all of our uh, judicial places. That, that this promise, this commandment was taken off the wall and no longer allowed to be placed there in the place of, just, of justice and judgment. How, how true is that really in the world in which we live? That this promise, this commandment, ripped off of the walls of justice and judgment, no longer to be put into effect, has been a problem that we have had to deal with in, in, in our generation. So he says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So he says unto his children, I'm going to take you in to the land of Canaan that I have promised to give unto you. And children, honor your father and mother, that your days may be long, that you might prosper. I wonder why it is we are in such dire straits today as a nation with so many unthinkable, ungodly things that go on day in and day out. Why we found during the last election riots in the streets and people inhabiting streets, you know. Why it is that we, we find in, in every avenue all these different things which cause a division between a people. Well, maybe it is we forgot that it was important for us to keep up the statutes in which God has given. And these were the things that we were supposed to teach our children. These were the, the ways in which we were supposed to help them to travel down the paths that we were supposed to show before them. The duty of the parents or fathers 
to their children. He says that they should be not impatient, but use reasonable tasks and judgments. In other words, don't try to make a child to be older than what they are. Man, let the child be a child for as long as they can be. Let them, let them run. Let them fly. Let, let them be children. Don't try to make them to be you know, little adults when they're not ready to actually handle that very thing. Let them be children so that they might enjoy the life in which God has given unto them to live. And we should be patient, patient upon our children. Listen, sometimes we expect more out of them than they're absolutely capable of actually doing. And what we really should be doing is recognizing where they're at today so that we might be able to help motivate them and encourage them on to be, to be a little bit better, to be a little bit stronger, to be a little bit wiser. To, to be the, the, the children in which, which are, are growing naturally, to be the young adults in which they can be. In Luke, the 21st chapter, it says, and, and just note the time and the, and the things that are going on in the world in which he is talking about. He says, and ye shall be betrayed both by parents. And I really believe, if you look to Luke, the 21st chapter, he's, ta- he's actually talking to the children of Israel on the premise of when he leaves, there's going to be hard times in which they are going to absolutely have to face. But I also believe that as we draw closer to the end, that you're going to find these things to be more prominent day in and day out. That 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 what is to be natural. You know, family units and the strength of a family unit should have been a natural thing that families will do for families. But now, as he talks about here, families will tear up against families. Families will work uh, in, in a manner that is against one another. And so he says, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends. And some of you shall, shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not be a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. That in the hard times, in the lean times, in the the difficult moments, as as you raise your children, what you will find is that Patience will be a, a thing in which you will need, but it'll, sometimes it will be hard to come by. And maybe this is where my dots started having a hard time connecting. Because it is not a natural thing for you and I in this world in which we live to be able to be patient. We don't live in a patient world. We live in a very impatient world. Everything's about fast food. It's about having it now and, and not not having to wait much longer. It's about being able to stick something in a microwave and having it in two seconds. It's about us living life as quickly as we possibly can because it just seems like the days are growing shorter and shorter and shorter. So we we must get as much as we can in right now while we can. We're impatient in waiting for something because, because we don't know if we're going to be able to be around to enjoy it in a time to come. So today might be the day that we need the thing in which we need. This moment is what we have. Possess your souls. He, he, he encourages them to, no matter what might, might come forth, no matter the struggles that might be, lay hold of, that, of your very soul so that it might be kept in the right place and in, in, in doing the right thing. But to do that, he says you have to be patient. Christian patience is what helps us to possess our souls. And I don't know if, if, if I can completely can, can grasp a hold of the difference between patience in and of itself and Christian patience, except to say this. Patience in and of itself is to wait upon a thing, not to re- really to, to try to push things out of the way so it actually can be. Right? It's, it's to, to wait upon it, to, to know that, that what is today can be it might not be tomorrow to be okay at this moment with what is to be patient well christian patience is to then to take that patience that is natural which we have and to put it to put it to lay it upon god 
It's in the midst of my struggle to say, okay, I'm not going to fight against it. I'm not going to resist it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to put it into God's hands. I'm going to, I'm going to ask God to help me out, to, to make me strong, to help me not to, to move beyond what I should. And then all of a sudden, that's where we start possessing our soul. That, that when we place it into God's hands, then our souls are in a place of, of rightness before Him. And so we, we can be calm, we can be cool, we can be collected knowing that, that God himself is going to move in a direction. And I can be okay. I can be okay with an answer that even if I don't like the answer, I can be okay with it if I know that it came from God. And so I'll be all right. Be patient. The time is now for, to plan for our future. And I'm saying that on, on this premise, that we, we have to deal prudently and wisely with what it is that that it that we have right now and when i say prudently that really means to take care of the things or or to have a care of the things for the of the future so i am not i am not today at my ending place and i think of it in this way the apostle paul said at a certain point in time he said i i have not yet reached my mark but I aim towards it. And so that's what, what I believe that to truly mean. There is, there is an end game here as far as things. You know, I realize that day by day I'm, I'm that much closer to my end here. It's not my end completely. It's just my end here. I'll move beyond this life and move into a life in which God has planned for me. And so I'll move beyond this moment and step into eternity to be with my God forever. But today, while I still have breath, I need to move towards my future. And my future are my children. My future are my grandchildren. It is what I leave behind. It is the heritage of the Lord. And so we can rejoice in all of that. Listen, in, in Psalms 78, as we, we begin to close this out, this is what... Uh, was told unto the people of God, say, saying this, that the generation to come might know them, talking about the commandments of God, even the children which should be born, who should, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. This generation <clears throat> that is coming up, the one that you are raising up, they do not have to be subjected to our failures. They can rise above it. They can... They can draw closer to God. They can, they can put their lives in, in, a, in, a, in a motion towards doing the things in which God would have them to do. And parents, that is your responsibility, to help them move towards that mark, to be able to, to honor and to glorify God in their generation. If we failed, it doesn't have to be our children's failure. They do not have to own the things in which we failed in doing. They can rise above it. But first, let us teach them the right way. Because if we teach them the right way, then that gives them an opportunity to be able to overcome our mistakes. Bring them up well, under proper, compassionate correction, and in the knowledge and the duty of God. Bring them up well. In Psalm 22, we are, we are told to train up our children in the, and, and in the way of the Lord. So he says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. One of the things for certain, we may end up sometime, somewhere down life's, life's path, turning away from God. But if parents have taught their children, if they have 
help them to see that that the Lord loves them and that God is with them. If they if they've shown them their need for Jesus in their life, and if they have accepted Christ as their own personal Savior, even if they were to walk away from God, God never leaves them. And so it will always stay. It would always stick. And you might be here this morning watching online, and you might realize today that that we have a need in this life to to move our children towards God because they have a need in their life to accept Jesus as their Savior. Today is the day of salvation. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior today while you have this opportunity. Parents, help your children to understand that they have a need for Jesus in their life and that they're never too young to accept Him, to accept Him as, as, as their Savior so that they might have that promise of eternity in in, in their life. And I tell you, the earlier, the better. The longer that we wait to, to show our children that their need for Jesus, the more evil influence that can affect their life, which makes it harder for them to come to that place. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. Start your path with Him right now. While, we have, while you have this opportunity, that you might walk this life with Him by your side every day of your life. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Jesus knows our every need.